few other sports has its specialties, some you're more familiar with, such as Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR, all of which you see here on TSN. However, at times we like to bring you events that you may not be so familiar with, such as the Canadian Rally Championship. In countries such as England and those of Scandinavia, they literally draw millions of people to stages that make up a rally. And I think if you stay with us for the next little while here on TSN, you'll see why rallying is now the fastest growing auto sport in this country as TSN begins its coverage of the first of five events that make up the 1994 Canadian Rally Championship. Today we'll bring you highlights from round one, the Rally Auto Michelin Quebec Beauport from Quebec City. Future programs will cover Calgary's Michelin Rocky Mountain, the Baie de Chaleur in New Richmond, Quebec, the Rally Auto Charlevoix in Pointe au Pic, and we'll end the season with the 24th annual Michelin Rally of the Tall Pines from Peterborough, Ontario. So as you can see, Michelin has become a very important part of rallying in our country, a sport that really does have a long-standing tradition in Canada, but to be honest, has gone undiscovered by many auto racing fans across Canada. And let's be fair, that's because rallying does take place mostly away from the larger cities of our country. To begin our coverage of the Canadian Rally Championship for 1994, it's my pleasure to welcome the three-time and defending Canadian Rally Champion, Tom McGear, and it's nice to be with you. And to talk about rallying, for me, it's something not quite new, but I'm not totally familiar with it. So why don't you tell me, first of all, what your sport is all about? Well, thanks, Vic. Rallying for most people is just like a Sunday drive in the country, driving on a normal road at normal speeds. What we do is flat out racing in the woods, and uh, the roads are closed off to the public, and uh, we're just going for it. Now, is it, you described it at one point and said uh, it was legalized speeding. Granted, you're not on your roads are closed, but is that, the, is that the thrill you get from it? Well, that's the enjoyment. I mean, you're driving on a real road. It's uh, well, something that everybody drives up and down, and here you are going 100 miles an hour on it. It's great fun. Now, there are stages which are in the bush or in the forest, as you might say, but then there are also civic stages, in, in town stages. Yes, we do stages all over the place. A lot, of a lot of times we do short ones in a metropolitan area. That's to get the spectators out to see what we do. The majority of what we run, though, is run in, in the woods, in... Uh, unpopulated areas because that's where the best roads are sure now is it as quick is it as simple as to be going from point A to point B as quickly as possible is that rallying is in its basic form that's rallying in its basic form or the stage portion of the rally in its basic form you start from a standing start you arrive at a flying finish board and your time is taken over the distance that you drove um, to get to link those stages up, we drive on transits, and those are uh, basically open roads to the public. We have to drive at the speed limit. Our cars are street legal, mm -hmm. and uh, the co-driver, the navigator, is in charge of getting us there uh, at the proper time. And that's the other person we see in rallying is the co-driver. How important is the co-driver to all of this? Well, the co-driver is responsible for everything but the driving. I'm just the guy that sits in the driver's seat and drives the car. And uh, Trish, my co-driver, is in charge of getting me to the stages at the right time, calling out any dangerous areas that might come up on the stages from her route book, and also navigating and keeping track of the uh, where we are in terms of the other competitors. Now, when you think of other uh, forms of uh, auto racing, if you're an IndyCar driver, you go back to the Molson Indy in Toronto or Vancouver, what it is, you know that you know the track, you know the turns. Do you do your stages year after year, or do they change the stages on you? They try to change them as much as possible. Most of the stages that we run on, however, are the same uh, over a number of years. That's because it's difficult to get the roads, uh, get the permissions to close the roads, and uh, that's our biggest problem right now. So what kind of thing would the co-driver, uh, in this case, your co-driver, Trish, what would she point out to you? Well, she'd be calling the corners as they come up. Uh, she, uh, her route book would have dangerous areas, uh, for example, uh, corners that might be deceptive, tighten up as you get into the corner because you can't see the exit of the corner as you get to the entrance. Also, perhaps a bridge or a jump or something that you might catch you unawares. That's exact. And so all of this is just to free you up to concentrate totally on on the drive. That's right, just to make sure that you're going flat out and you're just, uh, if there's something dangerous coming up and I've just got my foot on the gas pedal, she'll tell me to slow down. And I mean, is there a lack of communication sometimes? Have you seen it where, not maybe not in your case, but have you seen co-driver and driver not work together? Well, it's not so much not working together. It's just very difficult as sitting in the passenger seat of a car that's bouncing around at 100 miles per hour to be able to keep track of the odometer, what the readout's coming up, and where the corners are coming. And sometimes if a co-driver misses the call, then that can cause a bit of a disaster. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the cars themselves. You see very high-tech production vehicles down to, in fact, 
you know, cars that are 20 years old. Yes, the, uh, there's three classes right now, I should say four classes. There's the open class, which is basically anything goes. Uh, modify your car uh, to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. And there's, that's where you see the supercars, four, three to 400 horsepower. Uh, pure racing machines. Then there's production classes like uh, the class that we run in. They're divided into three subclasses which are uh, by displacement, but basically they're stock cars. They even have a back seat. They're allowed some modifications to the suspension and the exhaust system, but that's about it. Now the open class, I guess that is the wildest class when you talk about three, four hundred horsepower. Are they the what, quarter of a million dollar machine? That's right, the Ford Escort uh, that uh, Carl Merrill runs from Maine, that's a car that's worth about 250,000 US dollars. It's a purebred racing machine, has about 400 horsepower, it's a World Cup uh, winning car. Now what kind of speeds are you talking about? Well, those cars will get up, the seven speed gearbox allow those cars up to upwards of 150 miles per hour. Now you're talking about a Ford Escort, but it's four wheel drive? That's right, it's not like the Ford Escort that you can buy in North America. <laughs> it's a four wheel drive, uh, 400 horsepower, uh, it has a close ratio gearbox. I mean, this car is seven uh, speeds. I'm told seven speeds forward. Yeah, and it's uh, it's closer to a race car than many open wheel cars on the track. What other uh, car in that class would you look for? There's also the Audi Quattro. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of those being run around. They're open class as well, and uh, a few of the Mitsubishi's and uh, Eagles are run in open class. Basically, you can take a production car and you can make some modifications to the motor. Now you're running in open class. Now in your class, you run a Subaru. That's right. What's the class called? Production GT, yeah. and that's uh, the uh, largest displacement class of the production cars. We have to run a stock engine. Although it's turbocharged, we're allowed to boost the uh, turbo output. Now, you are, you are, this is street legal, and you just uh, drive it to each event? That's right. It has a license plate, safety check, and uh, we have to make the, an insurance. It's a street legal car. The modifications that we've done are strictly for safety and uh, to aid it along the, the uh, rough roads. For example, the suspension is a little bit stiffer, just like you would if you had a uh, regular car and you wanted to upgrade your suspension. Now, when you see other racing, uh, whether it be uh, Atlantic or Indy cars or Formula One, you always see this entourage of of people and mechanics. Is the same thing applied to, uh, to rallying? That's right. We have a van and a trailer that tows the car to the rally, a service, onboard service crew, usually two or three people. They meet the car between the stages, uh, usually every two hours for about 15 or 20 minutes. And that's where you can repair some of the damages. Just like a pit stop, it's very short, very intense. What about the safety aspect? Because most rallying I've ever seen, both driver, co-driver, helmeted, fire suits, you sometimes see roll bars. How? How extensive is the safety? There's a lot of safety in the car. For driving off in the woods, uh, you're basically on your own. So the cars have a basic safety cage built around it, uh, a steel cage to supplement the strength of the car for rollover protection. Is that every car, every class? Every single car, every class. Uh, Six-point uh, harnesses for, uh, to hold you in. Um, racing seats are, uh, are used, fireproof suits, you name it. This is a racing car. How expensive is it for the novice? If I was going to want to start tomorrow. I'm not going to run out and buy a $250,000 Escort. I'm going to drive with something obviously more economical. No, and that's what the beauty of the sport is. You can start off with just a basic car. In the uh, production uh, 1750 class, for example, you can get involved in Honda Civics, uh, small cars, uh, just your basic street car, and away you go. Put the safety equipment in, and you're away to the races. How much money do you think we're talking about? Oh, very inexpensive. It depends at the level. You'll see some of the cars are quite ancient, and I'm sure they don't cost a whole lot to get on the track. I think one of the attractions of rallying for somebody who, you know, just wants to be a fan of it is that you can relate to the cars. I mean, you see the Subaru that I'm driving on the street, I see you rallying. That's right. It's just the same car. As a matter of fact, we picked it up off of the dealership lot and took it over to prepare it for rallying. And also, the roads that you're driving on are the same roads that you drive on to work or to, uh, to the cottage. When we come back, we'll have a review of the 1993 season, the Canadian Rally Championship on TSN is brought to you in part by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires, and by Aerofoil, the visibly superior wiper blade. There's only one wiper blade that gives you all this high performance. Wind channel ports, aerodynamically designed to prevent wind lift. A contact edge treated with a super durable graphite coating for long-lasting performance. Pressure points individually engineered for each blade length. And a high-profile design so the contact edge conforms perfectly to the curve of the windshield. When it comes to high performance, it's a clean sweep with Aerofoil, the leading edge in wiper technology. BF Goodrich TA. We were first to introduce a high performance tire. We not only invented.
invented the performance tire. We perfected it. If you put performance first, choose the world's first performance tire, BF Goodrich TA, because no other tires will do. Now you don't. McCain Golden Crisp, the best tasting fries to ever come out of your oven. Straight cut or cross tracks for crispy, tender potato perfection. Enjoy them alone or add your favorite topping. Now you did, but now you don't. Cross tracks from McCain, lightly battered, crispy on the outside, tender and tasty on the inside. Now you did, but now you don't. McCain Golden Crisp, snack time, meal time, anytime. The very best fries to ever come out of your oven. So, my best friend is working like a dog to clean his car. With dish soap? Hey, you washing your dishes or your car? Look what Spot's got for you. Yeah, Spot and Wash. <laughs> Dab a little on those embarrassing bug and car spots. Bingo, they're gone. Now wash the whole car with Spot and Wash. Oh, that's clean. Yeah, I wouldn't mind riding in that. New Spot and Wash from Armor All. You'll never use dishwashing soap again. Open the door, Spot. Spot, this is funny. February of 93 in Manawaki, Quebec, just north of Ottawa. And in what would become a year-long rivalry, Eve Barb and his co-driver, Vigil Lacroix, in their Eagle Talon, traded fastest times with Tom and his co-driver, Trish Barrow, and their Subaru. The minus 30-degree weather in Manawaki for the Rally Perstage was no doubt a factor in the large number of retirements. The Sprongle Brothers Audi, the Grabowski's Mitsubishi, and Sylvain Vincent's Mazda all succumbed to mechanical problems. And in the end, well, it was Barb winning by just 14 seconds from McGear. The championship then moved to the west for round two, the Bighorn Rally, starting from Hinton, Alberta. Eve Barb's talent caught fire, retired early, but that didn't make it much easier for McGear and Sparrow. Two-time Canadian rally champ Tim Bendel was entered with Art McKenzie in an ancient 1972 Datsun 510. The two champions battled back and forth before Bendel's local knowledge had to yield to McGear's four-wheel drive in slippery conditions. surprise, Bendel and McGear would go at it again as the rally championship moved south to Calgary for the annual Rocky Mountain Rally. And this time the old Datsun prevailed with McGear and Subaru having to settle for second place and a comfortable lead in the points championship. So after three events of the 93 season, Tom, we have three different winners, but it's really turning out to be a great battle, a wonderful rivalry between you and Eve Barb, and also a terrific battle between the cars, the manufacturers you in your turbocharged Subaru, Barb and his all-wheel drive Eagle Talon. But this is what we've decided to do. We've taken two Sony Handycams, we've mounted them each prospective car, and we've put you on, obviously, a five kilometer stage. Why don't you take us through it and we'll see who wins the battle of the stage. Okay, we've just started the stage now. You heard the uh, marshal counting us down. We're starting at the top of the minute and uh, accelerate away. You can see Eve got a little bit better of a start on us here, and we're starting to lose a little bit of time. The uh, highlight box on the right-hand side is showing that Eve's ahead of us slightly at this time. You can see that by some of the features going by, the trees and the fence posts going by. Now, is there something that he would have done off the start that would have given him the jump? Well, we run a little bit different uh, clutch system because we're running in the, with the transmission that we are. Uh, it does, can't withstand the horsepower too well, so we end up using a little bit slower start. You know, we don't uh, bounce off the line quite as easily as we should. So that slows us down just a little bit. We're going to hope to make up a little bit more of the time in the corners, though, as we approach one of the uh, tighter corners coming up. Interesting. You appear to be fighting the wheel a little bit more than he was early. Yeah, well, it's just the way the car is set up. Uh, if it starts to slide a little bit, you sometimes the idea is to keep it neat and tidy. Now, he wasn't right there coming out. Yeah, you can see that he's fighting the wheel just a little bit more, and we've made up a little bit of time. You can notice 
realize that uh, some of the features going by are a lot closer now than they were going in. So we've probably made up for one or two seconds of the two or three that we were behind. Eve Barb, though, continues to lead this identical stage here. You seem to want to throw the car into the corner a little bit. Uh, the, the Eve's going in just a little bit deeper. He'll go in a little bit further and then slide, and he's a little bit uh, looser coming out of the corner. And now you have the lead. Yeah, we've just made up a little bit on the corners, although it's very tight. We're only at the most one second apart here. As we approach the corner, you'll see that what we'll try to do is pendulum the car. I'll try and, uh, as I'm braking, I'll pitch the car a little bit to one side, get it unbalanced a little bit, and help it slide through the corner. Now, who gets the better exit speed out of the corner? Well, it looks like uh, Eve picked up a little bit of time in that corner there. We're dead even now because you can see that the, the feature's going by almost the same time. Uh, it's very close at this point in time, and you can see how evenly the cars are matched. Now he has the lead again now, Eve Barb. Now you're even again. And it's just swinging back and forth, and again, that just could be just uh, from where you are on the road, getting a little bit more grip on the straightaway. Coming into the corner again, under some braking, the car is going sideways. Big slide around the corner to keep the car uh, pointed in the right direction. Basically, what we're trying to do is just like a thrust vector off the tires. It's interesting to see the two wheels because both steering wheels actually look as if they were in identical position. Yeah, well, I guess we're both about the same right at this point. Eve has time, though, to uh, wave a couple of times to uh, some of the people lining the uh, course. You don't do that. Well, he seems to be a little <laughs> bit more relaxed about it than I am right at this point, I guess. Uh, he's fighting a little bit, grinding on it badly. Yeah, just a little bit. Probably lost a little bit of time there, but again, we're still even coming out of the corner. Now, big, long straightaway, and you can see that... Uh, hey, Eve, how are you? Yeah. As we go down the straightaway, just trying to apex the corners, keep it nice and tidy and clean all the way down to the finish line, which is about a kilometer ahead. Getting up to about 140, 150 kilometers here, shifting into fifth gear now. And there, Eve's got a little bit more. The thing is, you might have just a little bit more horsepower advantage on us right here, but it's awfully close. Awfully close indeed. The official time was bar beating you by one full second. Our frame-by-frame -frame analysis, though, of the video was six one hundredths. I mean, that's a blink of an eye, maybe a twitch of the wheel. You know, you, know, you can't even see that. One second to us is awfully close, and that's too close. All right, let's continue our look back at the 1993 season as we go to Quebec and the Bay de Chaleur Rally. Tom, it doesn't matter what form of auto racing, Quebecers love it, and they really appreciate fine rallying. This is the Bay de Chaleur Rally from New Richmond, Quebec. One of my favorite rallies, and one of the main reasons is because of all the people that come out to watch the cars go by. And there were several thousand on hand looking at this wild-looking machine, a modified 1990 Pontiac Fiero, the driver, two-time national champion from 84 and 85, Tim Bendel. The Bay is a two-day, 19-stage event, famous for high speeds, big crowds, as we've seen, and, of course, the dust. Bendel built up a 45-second lead, but ran into overheating problems on the second day with just two stages to go and then had to limp home and out of contention. Tom, you were running in car number one. We're having a great run against Bendel's Fierro and Barb's Eagle, but then you ran into problems as well. Yes, unfortunately, um, we were having a great advantage being car number one with the, no dust. Unfortunately, we had mechanical problems on the first day, put us out of the rally. Watching here is Jean Sebastian Besner and another Subaru. He had a few more problems, crashed his car heavily, and you can see some of the damage. Here we go. Yeah, this is a few times you see us on the first day, and uh, got a little bit sideways here and just managed to clip the pole. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know that I did it. You know, if you wanted the souvenir, you just had to ask. You didn't have to take down the side. Uh, Trish was hitting me over the head with it. The Mazda 323, Sylvain Vincent and Francois Sear. Another production GT car. Uh, Sylvain is from Quebec, a fast driver, hard charger. He just missed that pole. Now here comes Steve Walkington and Lisa Pelling in their Honda Civic. I've already been in the bush. Look at the tree branch sticking out of the front of the hood, and they did uh, a little more damage. Now you know this car very well. Yeah, it's my old uh, Mazda RX-7. I won the championship with it in 1990. It's a pretty fast car driven by Malcolm Swan and Clark Painter. And uh, Malcolm's keeping his foot in it. Look at the air he's getting there. Oh, man, hold on. The Ford Escort. Oh, Look at this fish the bridge abutment on the, the entrance to that corner. You can see he's dragging his bumper behind him now, but uh, he's certainly not slowing down for anything. Barry and Sandra Latre. A little bit more circumspect the second time around. Michel Poirier de Foix and Pierre Racine and the Eagle Talon. They're running uh, extremely fast, second place overall. Uh, went out on the second day, I think, uh, just a little bit too fast into one corner, rolled the car. In a cloud of dust and a high host silver, here come the Honda Civic of John McKenzie and Doug Armstrong. 
got to be tough on uh, some of the air filters, huh? Well, you can see what the problem with the dust is following a car in front of you. You're driving through the dust. Visibility is almost to nil sometimes. And the man in the car that had everyone eating their dust, e Barb and Terry F. for the Regal Talent. Yes, uh, Eves from Montreal, a lot of fan support, a lot of popular support in this area of the country. And so after a terrific run in the Regal Talon, the victory went to E. Barb of Montreal and his co-driver, Terry F. His second win of the year, and it tightened up the championship standings as well. Round five, the Highlands Rally started from Truro, Nova Scotia in late August, and it marked a turning point in the season as Carl Merrill from Maine debuted his secret weapon. The brand new 450 horsepower turbocharged four wheel drive Escort RS Turbo. In co driving with Merrill was John Buffum, the 11 time U.S. rally champion. And these two were to have a major impact on the 93 championship. And it's interesting that Merrill and Buffum actually switched drivers. Yeah, so this is the rally car to have. I think we all would like to get our hands on this one. And Carl was learning to drive the car. Had John uh, switch seats with him so he could get a little bit of a driving lesson from uh, John. So John's being shown as the driver of record on this event. And you would go on to finish second, which was important because Eve Barb would finish third in Truro, Nova Scotia. Help give us a bit of an advantage in the championship. Your co-driver, Trish Sparrow, has put away the signpost that you picked up in uh, Veda Chaleur and getting ready now for... The rally of the Voyageur, three weeks later in Mattawa, Ontario. Mattawa is a small town about an hour to the east of North Bay. New location for the rally, which used to be headquartered in the city, get a lot more uh, public support from a smaller venue. This is Frank and Dan Sprongo's latest uh, addition to the championship. 350 horsepower Audi wow. Quattro supercar. Isn't that nice? Yeah, he just brought it out, just finished building the car, and uh, was just basically giving it a shakedown run. He's going to be a real threat in the 94 championship. Just the kind of thing you want to see as you're running for a title, huh? Well, it's kind of hard to keep up with the open-class cars. There goes Frank there. You can see the difference between Eve Barb in the production-class car and Frank in the open-class car. Bruno Kreibich and uh, Jeff Becker from uh, New York City in their Audi Quattro. That's an old championship-winning car from about 1983 and uh, used to run in the World Cup circles. It's a little bit dated now, but still very fast. You can really hear the difference between the uh, open class cars running about 300 to 400 horsepower and the uh, production based cars running just a little bit less power. Brand new area for a rally. You've never seen this stage before. I mean, some stages you'll see year after year. So how much different is this? Well, although all rallies are secret rallies and we don't know the exact road, you get a feel for the roads every year as you go back and get a concept of how fast the road is or whether it's tight and twisty. These are all new to all of us, so it's kind of interesting to see how fast people are going. It uh, gives you a little bit better uh, concept of what rallying should be. Oh, my. And here comes this uh, Turbo S card. And Buffum wasn't with them. No, this is uh, one of the first times he was out uh, with his regular co-driver. He did very well. As a matter of fact, he won the rally. Krybeck and Becker in their Audi finish second with you and Trish finishing third. Barb and Nepp in fourth place. But it's interesting that brand new Escort Turbo has been dominant, winning two straight rallies. You, though, Tom, have been able to pick up some valuable points on Barb. More rally action when we come back. You're watching the Canadian Rally Championship on TSN. What tire do you trust in the wet? The tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The Wet Traction MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. blade has the aerodynamic shape that gives you perfect rain sweeping pressure even at performance speeds. Aerofoil, the leading edge in wiper technology. It's a hit. TSN Sports Radio featuring hourly updates and Dave Hodge commentary. TSN Sports Radio. Punch it up across Canada. Some cracked windshields have to be replaced. Others can be repaired. At Speedy Auto Glass, they do both, and either way, it's guaranteed. Don't take a chance. Take it to Speedy. Speedy Auto Glass, at Speedy we can. McCain has a tasty pizza snack. They call it Pizza Pockets. McCain! Pizza Pockets. The great pizza taste to keep you coming. 
back the king. Pizza pocket. Pizza perfection in a crust that's baked, not fried. So there's no leaks, no mess. Just taste. All taste and nothing but the king. Pizza pocket. No leaks, no mess. Just pizza perfection. What tire do you trust in the wet? The tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The Wet Traction MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Welcome back to TSN's coverage of the Canadian Rally Championship. Our look back at the 93 year. Vic Rutter along with Tom McGeer as we take a look at the second last event from October of 93. The Rally Auto Charlevoix from Point au Pique, Quebec. And what a great setting this is, Tom. Beautiful setting. It's one of the most scenic uh, areas of the uh, Rally Championship. Manoir Richelieu, just on the uh, banks of the St. Lawrence River. Beautiful old 150-year-old uh, building. And the uh, start of the rally is actually right at the front door. It's almost like the doorman waves us off. Just have to remember to tip them before you go. As we look at John Buffum and Jeff Becker in their Audi S2 Quattro, what's really great about this first stage is as it leaves the chateau, you're on the streets. Yeah, we're running on a street circuit, a paved circuit. It's one of the few times we run on pavement in the whole championship. It's a little bit different, and you'll see some interesting driving lines uh, as you watch the, the uh, cars go by. As we look back now at some of the cars, and now this number one, this is Buffum and Becker, and just watch them go. We've seen John before at the Highlands Rally when he was co-driving for Carl. This is uh, his own car. He only runs it uh, a few times a year. It's run by his stepson and other times uh, for the U.S. Championship. Very fast car. This may be as close to what we normally see in auto racing, street racing, where you know you find the apex of the corner, you can't really hang it out as quite as much as it would be on a gravel road. Yeah, that's right. They're trying to keep it clean and tidy. Once again, the fastest way around a corner is usually the uh, cleanest way. And you can see John's taking a nice wide line around the corner, but he's very fast on the exit. Now, if I remember correctly, didn't Buffum do some street racing? Did he do some sedan racing at one time? Yeah, in about the late 70s, he was running in the championships in the U.S. Interesting thing here is that John's actually running on gravel tires, uh, where the rest of us are running on pavement tires, and he's still setting the fastest time. Now, why would he have done that, do you think? Well, it's just because it's such a short stage, it's uh, probably just not worth uh, changing the tires. He's still the fastest overall. All right, here you go uh, along with Trish and your uh, Subaru Legacy Turbo. Yeah, we need all the help we can get on these stages, so that's why we're running on the pavement compound. How much thought actually goes into choice of tires? We spent a lot of time working on what tires we're going to run on the stages. Michelin has a whole range of rally tires. On the gravel especially, the rally tire has a much stiffer sidewall. That's to prevent punctures as we're sliding sideways over the gravel and rocks and branches. Also, it provides a stiffer sidewall so that the tire won't roll under the, under the car as we're sliding sideways at high speeds. Now, this is interesting because I know you said earlier you like to pitch a car into the corner. Do you try to do the same technique on a, on a asphalt surface? Well, unfortunately, I do. That's not really the fastest way around the corner, but it's kind of what we're used to doing in the car. Again, here, this is where I lose all the time. Going around this corner, a big understeer, uh, sliding way wide, losing a whole bunch of speed, which you can't afford to do in a production car. I think we lost about two or three seconds on that stage. Now, the leading time so far was John Buffum at 54 seconds, and you would come in a couple of seconds behind that as we look now at this powerful Ford Escort Turbo of Carl Merrill and John Wickens. John Wickens, a regular co-driver from Michigan, and uh, again, Carl's running on the gravel tires. I guess they figure they got so much power they can afford to lose a little bit of time on these stages. But you can see how the car is a little bit more squirrely uh, with the horsepower and the tires sliding around a little bit more. Now, it's interesting, you were pointing out that Buffum actually prepares this car. Yeah, John prepares the car for Carl and provides a service crew. And, uh, so that's why John and Carl both running on the same tires for this event. Again, you see a nice clean line around the corner, very fast down, putting all that power onto the road. I think him and John will tie the stage. Now the Eagle Talon and Eve Barb and Jill Laquan, you're right. Uh, Merrill and Buffum both had 54 seconds. Again, uh, Eve's running a car with about the same horsepower as I am, but uh, he capitalized on keeping his speed up around the corner, and you see he's nice and clean going around this corner. He keeps it nice and tight around the apex of the corner and straight out, and he manages to tie John and uh, Carl on the stage. That's probably because he's running on the pavement tires. And we're looking for the flying finish and the record time right there, and he would tie at 54 seconds. Well, that's not the way to go around the corner. There must be something about Subaru sliding sideways. John Sebastian and Besner just going a little bit too fast into the corner. Had to throw the car sideways to scrub off the speed. He 
you really want the uh, stiff wall tires there as we now head out onto one of the other stages and the gravel roads, which you're probably more familiar with. This is what we all uh, we all enjoy. Nice, fast, wide, open flowing roads. You can see the speeds are getting up there. Third gear going around the corners and accelerating into fourth. Lots of speed, lots of sliding, and it's great fun. Well, I would think, too, that you could pitch the car too much as we now look at the Barb Eagle Talon. Well, the key is trying to figure out what's coming around the corner. You're approaching a corner, and you really can't see around the outside of it. To use the car sliding sideways uh, to be able to uh, put a vector on the tires to help you pull the car around, as you can see Eve's doing here. Can't really see the exit of the corner, so he's trying to maximize his speed. That's why you want to be sideways. Unfortunately, if you go a little bit too fast, you'll be off the road. Now, vectors, that's something that an airline pilot would know about and that's what you are do you apply any of your uh, aeronautics into flying to this well not so much aeronautics it's just the uh, the idea i mean you're being able to catch what's coming up the unknown and being able to react to it and adapt to it look at this this is the interesting thing about this car here's merrill seven speed transmission look at wickens he almost sits in the back seat the idea of having a co-driver back like that is just so that it keeps him low and uh, aft on the car gets it down gets keeps the weight low and uh, helps the stability of the car now have a look you can actually see him shift here yeah you can see those black marks that's where he's shifting gears as he goes up through the gearbox that 400 horsepower and seven speed gearbox it'll slide the tires all or spin the tires all the way up through about fifth gear that's amazing bingo right there is what he about six now seven back eh where do you find seven slots in the transmission well you just keep going up until the car won't go any faster <laughs> This car just continued to pull away by about three minutes as we get ready now for the nighttime stage and the battle for the Canadian Championship still between yourself and Eve Barb, but Barb would actually have to finish ahead of you to have any chance, and this is where you pick up time. This is where the make or break, I mean, Eve and I were running uh, against each other all day. Carl was disappearing off into the distance, and uh, Eve was just about five seconds ahead after the day stages. We moved into the night, and Eve certainly had to try all he could, because if we beat him at this event, this would lock up the Canadian Championship for us. You did because out of the night you picked up another Canadian championship along with your co-driver Trish Sparrow as we look at the overall winners in that great Ford Escort Turbo Carl Merrill and John Wickens in the Rally Auto Charlevoix as they finish first ahead of yourselves and Sparrow Barb and Lacroix finishing third and in the Rally Championship the Canadian title goes to you with 90 points ahead of Eve Barb Still one more rally to wrap up the season of 93, the Rally of the Tall Pines from Peterborough, Ontario, and it's coming right up here on TSN. Do you believe in reincarnation? Armor All Tire Foam. It cleans, it shines, it makes tires look like new. Now do you believe? There's only one wiper blade that gives you all this high performance. Wind channel ports, aerodynamically designed to prevent wind lift. A contact edge treated with a super durable graphite coating for long-lasting performance. Pressure points individually engineered for each blade length. And a high-profile design so the contact edge conforms perfectly to the curve of the windshield. When it comes to high performance, it's a clean sweep. With Aerofoil, the leading edge in wiper technology. BF Goodrich TA. We were first to introduce a high performance tire. We not only invented the performance tire, we perfected it. If you put performance first, choose the world's first performance tire, BF Goodrich TA, because no other tires will do. Protector, a razor so sharp it has to be kept behind bars. Protective guard wires ensure that while the shave is close, there is no safer wet shave. Protector, only from Wilkinson Sword. It's a hit. TSN Sports Radio, featuring hourly updates and Dave Hodge commentary. TSN Sports Radio, punch it up across Canada. Do you believe in reincarnation? Armor All Tire Foam. It cleans, it shines, it makes tires look like new. Now do you believe? For the final
final event of 1993, we go back to last November and the 23rd annual Rally of the Tall Pines from Cottage Country, the Kawarthas of Ontario near Peterborough, Ontario. And Tom, one of the oldest rallies in this country and always a favorite. The 23rd running of the Tall Pines. It's the uh, longest running rally in Canada. And uh, close enough to Toronto that gets a lot of spectator enthusiasm. A lot of people come up from the city to uh, view the cars. And the first stage is held right downtown around the courthouse. Very short, but very tricky when you see, first of all, how cold it was. It was about minus 20. And then in and out of the snow, some pavement, a lot of snow, a lot of ice. Very hard to get a judge on what tires to run and how to drive the stage. You can see he's driving on pavement. Now he's over his just pure snow car. No, not even tire tracks around there. Then back out onto the pavement again. Very tricky to drive and with the this time of year. He had very slippery road conditions, and the, but the ditches are awfully hard to run into. That was the American champion, Paul Schwenier from 1993. And now we look at the newly crowned Canadian champion, yourself, Tom, and Trish. And what was your attitude going into this event? having already clinched the championship. We've clinched the championship for myself and Trish, but we were working on the uh, manufacturer's championship for uh, Subaru. So the idea was to finish the rally. We were just trying to have a nice, clean, fun run. Now, it must be difficult when you've all had horsepower in this Escort to actually put it down. And the same with this, this Audi. I mean, you just can't get it down, can you? You can hear how Frank's feathering the throttle. It's on and off the gas as he's trying to get for every little piece of traction. Even the smaller cars like this Honda are having the same problem. That's how slippery the road conditions are. Yeah, you can hear the throttle working overtime. And it's interesting. I mean, you're into the slush, you're onto the pavement, back into some of the ice. It makes for an interesting run. Now we head out into the bush of Peterborough, Ontario. And look at this. Carl Merrill in that Escort has a, uh, a flat left front. Yeah, Carl's running on a finished tire. It's a street tire for uh, snow and ice conditions. Doesn't stand up to the uh, pounding that it, that it takes. And Carl's obviously just slid a little bit wide, hit something, and the tire's gone flat immediately. That's the difference between running a rally tire, uh, specifically made for rallying, and a street tire. Boy, and some of the ruts in the road, if you get in and out of those, I would think you want to hit the ruts. Do you have to be in the rut, or do you not want to hit it? Well, it depends how deep the ruts are. You sort of have to judge it as you go. You can see Frank Sprongel here. He's just really into it, and he's just caught his tire on the inside edge. He's pulled him around and pulled him into the ditch. Unfortunately, he's not far off the road, and there's no damage done to the car, although it looks pretty bad. He gets and he's just a little too far off to get back on the road. Well, now there's the ruts actually catching the car and uh, throwing it sideways. Again, that's a function of how much power you have and how fast you're going. If you think you can bounce through the ruts, then the best thing to do is just go flat through them. Kombrowski, he's having a very clean run. I think he was second fastest on this stage. He even caught up to the car in front of him, Tim Bendel. You can see the difference between the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive car in the, in the slippery conditions. And you can hear Marsha Kombrowski saying, you know, let's get by. Now we've got somebody in trouble here. Yeah, well, they're not very forgiving. They call it uh, winter roads and summer ditches. When you go into the ditch, it's very hard to get back out. The snowbanks don't bounce you back onto the road. At this point, Carl and uh, Paul were battling for the lead of the rally. The two supercars were well out in front, and there was a bit of a battle going on behind. How much brake are you using, or is it all throttle control? You can see the brake lights come on on the car occasionally. As you enter the corner, you're with your left foot braking. It means you've got your foot flat on the gas pedal to uh, keep the power up, but you're also using the brake to slow the car and stabilize the car and get it to slide a little bit more. You've got some problems here, transmission? Well, unfortunately, yeah, we lost second and third gear at this point in the rally, and we were just sort of stumbling along trying to get to the finish line, get the uh, manufacturer's award. And uh, we ended up doing a fairly good run, I think, we, uh, considering the conditions. But again, it's, the trick here is to be uh, smooth and stable. That's the fastest way through. Is this uh, smooth and stable for... Uh... No, but there's spectators watching there, so that's the other factor. You want to be spectacular, too, give all the spectators a good show. Now, you were saying about the power steering. Maybe that's why there's so much sawing going on here. Well, the road's really narrow and rutted, and the car's bouncing around a bit. You want to be able to keep the car uh, pointed in the right direction all the time, get everything uh, lined up. So you really fight the wheel in a lot of cases, especially when the road gets narrow. Do you find sometimes the power steering can't keep up? Yeah, if you're going back and forth, a lot of times you can feel a little bit of a drag from the power steering. So you really just got to pull the wheel over as hard as you can. brake lights on there. He's left foot braking and this time he's got his foot down on the gas pedal at the same time the left foot's pushing on the brake pedal. Help the car get a little bit sideways. I'll tell you what great slide though. 
this car looks almost right out of place. Well, two-wheel drive, it used to be the way to go, but uh, the four-wheel drive technology has really caught up. The speed differential is uh, quite amazing. But uh, Tim's putting on an excellent show. I mean, he's a super driver, and uh, he's going really fast in these, uh, for these road conditions. And only two-wheel drives pushing the car along. Would you find it difficult to step back? to do a two-wheel drive car? Uh, yeah, I found it took about a year to get used to the four-wheel drive. And, uh, going back, it'd probably be pretty scary for the first few runs. Man alive as he fishtails it through the Kawarthas. You can see the difference between Paul's car and uh, Tim's car before on the uh, stability. Nice smooth slide and the car just powered down, accelerates their way on the straightaway. Paul Schoenier and Jeff Becker would win the Rally of the Tall Pines, followed by Marilyn Wickens in that Ford Escort Turbo. With yourself and Trish finishing third, Mendel and McKenzie fourth in their Datsun. As for the Canadian Rally Championship, you already had it locked up. E. Barb in second, and Merrill is now third. When we come back, we'll go to Quebec City. The Citadel, the Shadow Frontenac, the first rally of 1994, the Canadian Rally Championship only here on TSN. The Michelin XH4 tire comes with a 130,000 kilometer tread wear guarantee. That's three times around the world. A long way, no matter what circles you travel in. Wiper blade has the aerodynamic shape that gives you perfect rain sweeping pressure even at performance speeds. Aerofoil, the leading edge in wiper technology. the taste of McCain Frozen Punch in orange, berry, and fruit punch. McCain Punch is made with real fruit juices to deliver real fruit taste, which makes McCain the punch of champions, like Roberto Alomar. Win a day with Roberto Alomar and the Blue Jays by entering the Catch the Taste sweepstakes from the Junior Jays and McCain Punch today. Catch the taste. The Michelin XH4 tire comes with a 130,000 kilometer tread wear guarantee. That's three times around the world. A long way, no matter what circles you travel in. The 1994 Canadian Rally Championship season begins in Quebec City as rallying comes to the big city, Tom, in an effort to once again bring the sport to the people. That's right. Uh, the big snowstorm just before the rally started, and uh, that was to play a factor a little bit later on. But this is a new undertaking. It's a new rally, uh, lots of publicity behind it, and hoping to bring this rallying to the city. The downtown start uh, just outside the uh, old walled city, and you can see the wall in the background. Pretty cold out, though, minus 30 degrees Celsius, and beautiful sunshiny day for the start. So not far from the Plains of Abraham, where Wolf and Montcalm did battle, some of the country's top rally drivers are all set to do battle. Matter of fact, the first stage, off we go. We're on the Plains of Abraham. It's a road that runs around the edge of the Plains of Abraham. And uh, first time that we've ever run here, first time that uh, they've allowed racing on these uh, areas. As I see, it's a snow and ice uh, condition. It's all snowy, uh, quite rutted around here. And uh, again, we're having problems getting the power down to the, to the ground. The horsepower advantage is a little bit less here, though. Uh, cars with three or 400 horsepower just can't use it to their advantage. And uh, this is just the kind of rallying I'd like, get a little bit more even footing. In fact, it's very similar to what you faced that first stage of the Rally of the Tall Pines. Again, the same thing, except that you can see the snow banks here. That helps us out a lot. If you get a little bit wide on the corner, the snow will actually help push you back onto the road again. Might be a little bit more like a bobsled racing. Yeah. 
conclusion. Interesting story with uh, Carl Merrill and that Ford Escort that we saw really win so many events in 1993. He came, but he didn't run. We were hoping that Carl was going to start the rally season off with a bang in this event. And unfortunately, as he uh, got the car off the trailer, mechanical problems, uh, couldn't get the car going for the start of the stage and uh, was out before he even got a chance to try. And you can hear the whistle for the flying finish. He didn't have a good run here. No, these are spectator stages. Again, they're short. Uh, you can uh, you can lose a rally on these, but you won't win a rally on these spectator stages. So you try and take it a little bit easy. We were only three or four seconds behind, but that kept us off the leaderboard. This is Frank and Dan Sprongle's Audi Quattro. Uh, first time it's really being run in anger here, and uh, it's a spectacular car, 350 horsepower, and uh, Frank is giving it his all for the spectators, that's for sure. Well, you can see some of the spectators backing off, but that's what that's what it's all about is bringing the event to the spectators and you get a great look at it here on the Plains of Abraham. Exactly, a beautiful setting and a beautiful day and uh, getting a chance to see the cars do their stuff. Although again, these are the spectator stages and uh, they're not really descriptive of the rally. The, uh, the real meat of the rally is up north when we get into the, uh, the long stages. Well, you hope to get up, of course, but you would get up eventually as we take a look at this Eagle Talon. It's Barry and Sandra Latre, new car. Last year they were in the Ford Escort front-wheel drive car. Now they're in the four-wheel drive uh, Eagle Talon in the production GT class, uh, hoping to uh, go a little bit uh, quicker and uh, challenge for the overall wins. They've been class winners for the last three years, and uh, this year they're with the new car, hoping to be able to uh, get better overall finishes. And as you said, it might take a little while to get used to the four-wheel drive as compared to the two. Exactly. Uh, Barry's being a little bit more tentative here, but uh, that's well understandable with a completely different drive style required between front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. What kind of differences would he have noticed now right away? Well, the big difference is that the car will accelerate incredibly fast, uh, much faster than what he's been used to doing, all four wheels pulling the car along. But it still takes about the same amount of time to stop. Matter of fact, it'll take longer because the car probably weighs about eight, 900 pounds more, a lot more momentum to stop. Sylvain Vincent now and uh, off on the course in the Mazda. Again, it's a quick car, a little bit lower horsepower than uh, most of the cars running nowadays. And, uh, but still, the four-wheel drive on this condition uh, should make it pretty quick. But less horsepower actually better in this situation. Well, yeah, less horsepower because it's a little bit easier to control and uh, it certainly evens it out. Uh, again, the higher horsepower cars are still faster, but it's a lot closer than, uh, than you would have on gravel. This is a pretty setting as he comes through the plains of Abraham. And you can see how much snow has fallen. It was a 30 centimeter snowfall the day before the event began. Yeah, something that you don't really notice is that that's glare ice that uh, we're driving on. And the speeds are getting up about 120, 130 kilometers an hour on this short uh, two, two kilometer section of road. Interesting, we don't see Marsha Grabowski in the car. Martin Hedlund is in as the co-driver. Yeah, Marsha was, uh, couldn't make it to the rally this year with uh, family commitments. But uh, Wojtek and Marsha are quite an interesting story. They've been around for uh, a number of years in Canadian rallying. From Poland originally, where Wojtek used to drill, drive in a thrill show. It's part of the circus. And, uh, his favorite trick was uh, apparently driving on two wheels. Marsha would climb out on the uh, high side and wave to the crowd as they went by. <laughs> Wojtek transferred that a bit. He's a very spectacular driver and uh, very quick when the car's running well. Yeah, well, listen, some people might think that that thrill show is just the early stages of rally. Well, yeah, he's just transferring it over <laughs> on now onto the roads. different will it be not having Marsha beside him? Well, it's a little bit different. Martin's a well-known co-driver. He's probably recognized one of the best in North America right now, so he's certainly got uh, excellent help in the right seat. And you can see Martin pointing out the direction the car's going, uh, which way to go, and uh, make sure that uh, Wojtek keeps the speed on as much as possible. And through the final. Jean-Marc Alcaraz now uh, starting the stage. A little bit further down the pack, uh, Jean-Marc's a uh, local Quebec driver that uh, does a lot of running in the Quebec Championship. Very quick on this stage, and uh, he's obviously fearless running through here, setting fastest time in, uh, in this uh, Mazda 323. And again, the thought being that you and others would get a chance to go up north and maybe pick up the time, but you wouldn't as uh, Jean-Marc Alcaraz and his co-driver, Yves Joyel, win the first stage ahead of the Sprongles and the Latres. Now, another stage where they took it to the people. They actually plowed 
a stage out of a parking lot at Les Galeries. Yeah, there's a shopping center just north of Quebec City, and uh, this is a field. Again, this is the concept of a spectator stage. Bring the rallying to the people. They just carved out a road with a bulldozer out right in the middle of a, a field. After two stages, you thought you were going to head up to the Charlevoix region, but 30 centimeters of snow, Tom, basically closed all the roads. They couldn't even plow them because they'd drift over as soon as they did. So they brought you back to Beauport, Quebec, just outside of Quebec City, and an industrial area for your fourth and final stage. Yes, this was supposed to be a spectator stage, and it turned out to be the last stage of the rally because of the, the real roads just weren't available. So now it's make or break. I think the top uh, cars are separated by less than a minute. And any mistake here is uh, mean the end of the rally for, for you. And we were really trying hard. I think everybody was pushing to the limit here. Well, sure, you knew that this was going to be it as Grabowski and Headland. And again, we tell you that Marsha Grabowski not along as she stayed home. Exactly. You can see the road surface again. This is a paved road. It has, it's been plowed in areas, and then you're going down side streets. That just, it's just an industrial park uh, north of the city. Kind of an interesting road condition. So you can see Martin's giving uh, Wojtek instructions as to which corner to make. Breaked a little bit early going into that corner. I think he set up for the wrong corner. And now he's uh, urging him along. You can see the road surface has changed. He's having a hard time keeping the car under control. But now he's going to make a right-hand turn. You can see Martin's egging Wojtek along and get the speed up. Keep going. Now, it appears there may be a little confusion between Martin and Wojtek. Is that because they're just unfamiliar with each other? No, that's just Martin. It's a very difficult stage. It's uh, very hard to read, and uh, the, there's big snow banks and very narrow roads. And what he's doing, as Martin's doing, is he's just giving Wojtek every piece of information that can help him along. 400, stop, turn left. You can see the road surface. He just came off the road. It was paved and uh, lots of traction. He's coming down this snow-covered street now. It's very hard if you go too fast into the corner. Once you hit that slippery stuff, you'll go straight off into the snowbank. And you could hear Martin Headland say, you know, left. It's coming up. What is he calling out? He's Feet giving or a, meters. Or? He's giving a distance. It's not necessarily not specifically any particular distance. It just happens to be that's how f that's a, a significant distance away, long distance away. Coming up to the finish line now, and, uh, getting their time. And the time, one minute and 50 seconds. This is Besner and Lacroix. That's Jean Sebastian Besner and uh, his new co-driver, Bejel Lacroix, who used to go with Eve Barb last year. He's not running the championship this year. Jean Sebastian's an old Honda Michelin racer, and uh, he's certainly got a lot of experience on the pavement. But again, these changing road conditions are making life interesting. See, the commentary is in French now as uh, Bejil is giving him the, uh, the instructions. So it'll be a gauche or a droit. That's it. Now, how, diff how difficult is it, the changing road conditions? Well, you can see this last la that last Number corner one. that uh, Jean Number went one. through. Just clipped the bank on the outside, big pile of snow flying over the front of the car. It's coming in, you can see it's uh, half ice, half, half pavement, Ooh. and it's difficult. A little bit wide again, bounces off the snow bank. The front end's trying to dig in a little bit faster, and you might have uh, pushed the nose into the bank and spun, or, spun out completely. Quite lucky to get out of that one. Now, do you... Do you want to use the previous car's ruts at all, or do you want to carve your own path? Well, you're basically trying to follow your own path. You can see where the cars in front have gone, and that helps a lot. But uh, again, it's uh, very difficult to read this road condition. One minute and 51 seconds for Besner and Lacroix. Sprongle and Sprongle. There, here you can see.
Jamie Franks just giving everything he's got to the car. It's completely sideways coming around the corner. He's on the power coming around to the next corner. And just a nice sideways slide. Power is on and away he goes. He's just putting that 350 horsepower to work all the way. I'll tell you what makes a uh, sprint car racer proud to see slides like that. Yeah, exactly. You can see the steering wheel, that uh, the amount of wheel that uh, Frank's putting in to keep the car going. The car is very twitchy. He's trying to get all that power down on that slippery road condition. And he's really working the wheel back and forth to keep it around. Cutting the bank just a little bit in on the inside. A little bit of snow flying over the car, but he's trying to square off that corner. The flashers just come on. Did he hit something? That's just the wheel flailing around. Your hands flailing around the wheel. Probably just tagged the uh, four-way flasher switch on the way. Well, the power of that uh, Audi coming into play. One minute and 45 seconds for Frank and Dan Sprongle. And now you're up. That was the time to beat. Uh, we were running about uh, 20 seconds, uh, 30 seconds behind him at this point. Um, didn't think we were going to do much to be able to keep up with them, but uh, we're sort of giving everything we got trying to stay ahead of the next car. Now you can just see there's, you know, sometimes I guess the car will bite and then it will just slide and drift off on you. That's the problem. You're trying to set up for the corner. You're going into the corner and as you go in, you're trying to get those, the traction. You figure it's going to be slippery and then you hit a little patch of pavement and the car just darts off on the side. just plow this for you? Yes, this is uh, the, with the snowfall. We're running here on a Sunday, and uh, they were in the night before, cleared the road off with all that snowfall that they had, trying to uh, salvage what was left of the rally. See, we're coming up to the square right now, and again, the are changing road condition. The car's understeering like crazy around this corner. You can see the uh, front wheels cranked right over. Well, you got it locked uh, to the right. Basically, that's all you can do at this point, and as you get onto the slippery stuff, and just hope that the car's going to come around. And it's interesting. I mean, you come off that corner with what seems to be very little snow, then you're into snow again here. You're out of snow. You know, it's an exciting road to drive, that's for sure. It was uh, very interesting, and gained back onto hard pavement now right to the finish line. And a good time. You didn't think you were going to be able to keep up with that uh, Audi at 145, but you come in at 149. So the first winners for 1994, Frank and Dan Sprongle in their Audi, win this snow-shortened Quebec Beauport Rally. Just four stages because of a 30-centimeter snowfall north of Quebec City. You and Trish finished second, Tom, in your Subaru while Wojtek and uh, Martin Hedlund, and I can see Marsha now saying, you see, Wojtek, you couldn't do it without me. So an interesting start to the 94 season, Tom, but in all fairness, not a true test of driver, co-driver, or car. No, it was because of the shortness of the event. It's really hard to get a gauge on what's going to happen in the future. But I think Frank and Dan Sprongle's car has really proved that it's the car to beat this year. There are some big plans for that uh, Quebec Beauport rally, aren't there? Yes, I think they're hoping to have it in the next couple of years as a World Cup event, and that's going to do our sport uh, great good. For those of you across the country, the Canadian Rally Championship continues in Hinton, Alberta. That event comes up in May, followed by Calgary. And then the championship moves back east to New Richmond, Quebec in July. The August stop is Truer, Nova Scotia. September, Mattawa, Ontario. Point au pic in October, before concluding the 94 season with the 24th annual Rally of the Tall Pines in November in Peterborough, Ontario. So heading into the second event of the season, teams, cars to beat? Well, I think the next rally, the Bighorn Rally, will be the true test of, uh, of rallying. And I think that Frank and Dan Sprongle are going to be the car to beat this year. And can you win another championship? Well, we're certainly going to give it a try. Best of luck to you and uh, Trish. Thanks. Now on behalf of Tom McGeer and our entire crew, I'm Vic Crowder. Thanks for joining us. The Canadian Rally Championship on TSN is brought to you in part by Aerofoil, a visibly superior wiper blade, and by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires.